welcome this is the work we have done so far and we are in Bob in uniform motion part 2 and the reason I have a part 2 for this is because last time I told you I'm gonna ask you a radical question and that question is this what is the velocity of Bob at two seconds now you may say what is so radical about this just asking me velocity and I have the formula for this right well I have highlighted something over here I'm asking Bob's velocity at two seconds so what does that mean I'm not giving you any time interval I am asking you at two seconds so far all you know to calculate is if I give you some time interval then over that time interval you can calculate the change in position take the ratio and you can calculate the average velocity well guess what I'm not giving you a time interval this is not a time interval this is a specific moment in time see what we did last time just to be sure, look at what we did last time. We divided the changes of position by the time interval. This is not a moment, this is not a moment in time. These were moments of time. We took specific time intervals and we divided it. And that's what we call as average velocity. In fact, that's why it's called as average. Whenever you divide by a time interval, that's when we call it as average value. Anywho, that's not important. Anywho, what is now important is, I'm not giving you an interval. I'm asking you velocity at two seconds. So, what would you do? Well. The first thing is we'll just use this equation and let's see if we can if we can do something with it. Again, we have the same situation as we had before, Bob in uniform motion. We did this last time, so the same drawing as you see. So what we're gonna do is we, we are we are trying to find out the velocity at this moment in time. So what what is the final time? Well, the final time is t equals two seconds. Okay, so let me write that down here. That this is an attempt to solve this which is going to fail horribly as you'll see anyway it's an attempt the final time is two seconds okay what's the initial time well since I'm not giving you a time interval it's at two seconds the initial time is also two seconds what is Delta T well obviously it is zero that's what I'm trying to tell you from that time anywho let's now see what's the change in position I'm pretty sure you can guess it all by yourself the position at two seconds is five meters so the final position is five meters the initial position is also five meters so delta x is zero. Oh, ho, ho. so our attempt to solution that is the average velocity okay uh, I want you to concentrate average velocity at two seconds is going to be delta x divided by delta t is 0 by 0. What's going on? By the way, we have encountered a 0 by 0 on our third episode. Oh my gosh. Think about it. 0 by 0, your first thoughts would be that this answer is 0. Well, let me tell you, it is not 0. Mathematicians call 0 by 0 as an undefined value. Well, that's what mathematicians say. You can also plug this in your calculator and you will see an error. But what we physicists say is that whenever you reach a 0 by 0, any moment in your life, it just means that your approach to that problem was wrong. That's all. Okay, it does not mean the problem is wrong. It doesn't mean that this question does not make any sense. It makes some sense. However, your approach or our approach to this particular problem was wrong. And that's why I ended up getting a zero by zero. So what to do in order to get the right approach? Well, fortunately for us, we are still in uniform motion. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here and try to understand what uniform motion was. Do you remember what uniform motion was? Here it is. Uniform motion was this. Regardless of what time interval you take, you will always find the position change in such a way that the ratio remains a constant. What that means is, what that means is over here, I'm going to plot. If I take a delta t value of let's say 0 0.00000002 0 
few seconds. I take an extremely time interval, small time interval. What I want you to do is imagine like this. I have paused the movie at this moment and someone is asking you what's the velocity? Well, the movie is paused. How do you get that? So what you do is you play the movie for an extremely small moment of time. That's easy instant of time. That's 0.00002 seconds. And what you will find because it's uniform is that the delta x in that extremely small moment in time or interval of time is one two three four five six seven you will find in that small in um, interval you get one two three one two three four five six and you'll get a four meter here right let me see yes that's what that's what you will end up getting and how do i know that well i know this because the ratio has to be two that's the characteristic feature of uniform motion. That means even if I take, even if I play the movie for such an incredibly short moment of interval of time, that is, I played for zero, 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 zero. I put, I put, I put what, a thousand zeros in between, and then I put a two second. Then delta x will also be zero, 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 a thousand zeros in between and four meters. Such that the ratio will again remain the same, two meters per second. So now we can understand what the velocity is going to be at two seconds. Even if delta t is approaching zero, you see, it's approaching zero, delta x will also approach zero, as you can see. However, the ratio will always remain two meters per second. So how do we calculate instant velocity. Well, I'm not going to tell you how to calculate instant velocity. I won't tell you yet, but at least we know what the instant velocity at this point is. The velocity at, 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 at two seconds will still remain two meters per second. And this velocity, we are going to call it as instantaneous instantaneous velocity. And the name itself tells you it's the velocity at a particular instant of time. And in our example, in our example, that answer, so I'm going to remove the bar now, no longer do we have a bar, that answer will still remain two meters per second. But don't take this for granted, people. It's not a general case. In general, average velocity and instantaneous velocity need not be the same. It's a characteristic feature of uniform motion. In uniform motion, it doesn't matter which velocity you're talking about, you'll always get the same result. But the goal of this episode was to introduce you to this awesome concept of instantaneous velocity. And what is so awesome about it? The awesomeness about that is if you try to do this using algebra, <laughs> you're gonna end up getting zero by zero. This also tells you another important thing about ratios. If you have any ratio which has a numerator and denominator, even if the numerator and the denominator are approaching zero, the ratio can still have a finite value. And that's exactly what happened in this particular situation. But in general, if Bob was not moving in a uniform motion, we're gonna get to that stuff eventually. But if it was not moving in uniform motion, then average value, average value which is calculated over a time interval, and the instantaneous value, which is calculated at a moment in time, definitely need not be the same. They won't be the same in every situation. It's only in the special case. I can't stress on this much, guys. You, you know I'm stressing on this because I want you to grasp this concept carefully, okay? So, to summarize, what we learned in this short episode was we learned that there are two kinds of velocities, okay? There's an average velocity and there's instantaneous velocity. Either way, what is velocity? I haven't defined velocity for you, right? So what is velocity? Well, velocity is just telling you how quickly the position of a particle changes. Okay, let me write, down, write that down over here. It tells you how quickly the position of a particle changes. That's over here. And the technical definition for this would be this. Rate, I'm gonna put that over here. The rate of change in position. Every time you hear the word, how quickly, okay, here it is. How quickly, the technical term for that will be rate. 
So how quickly the position of a particle changes and that's rate. And there are two kinds of velocities. The average velocity which you can calculate using simple algebra, the maths that you know so far from your high school or whatever. Simple algebra, you take the change in position and you divide it by the time taken. That's it. Okay, and you have the other kind, the other kind of velocity, which is the instant velocity you calculate at a particular moment in time. You can't use algebra to do it. We have to do something else to do that. I will tell you what we have to do, okay? Because using normal algebra, we can't do it. We need more than just algebra to calculus it. Anyways, I'm gonna tell you about how to do that next time. So stay tuned for future episodes.